in Jesus name hallelujah are you all happy I believe I've been trying to break the ice so that you can be free I'm still mama the one that hates sin and shuns evil the one that does not want nonsense when I see nonsense I become angry because I know where I'm coming from I know what I've been doing before so I don't want to go back to what I've been doing before I want to lead a righteous life and I want to go to heaven hallelujah hallelujah can we go to the word of the Lord can you tell the person that is close to you are you free eh? or are you free or are you still on the other side we are all here isn't it hallelujah there is an ugly book there which is brown in color can you give it to me please let us go to the word of the Lord and we read in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 if you may go with me Isaiah 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 chapter 9 I'm also asking for those my eyes so it's not that I see I see I can read but this light will enter into my eyes and I won't see clearly did you find it can I read thank you It reads thus, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And again, let's go again to the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 11. Luke chapter 2 Luke chapter 2 verse 11 This is a story of the shepherds They were told For there is born to you this day In the city of David a saviour who is Christ the Lord? Can I repeat it? For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And the last one, let us go to the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 31. I want us to read all of them just one time and then. We can then go and speak what we are going to speak about today. Acts chapter 5. Verse 31. Thank you, Jesus. It says... Him God has exalted to his right hand to be the prince and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Can I read it again? Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Can we pray? Father, thank you for this awesome, wonderful word. Guide us, teach us, lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I greet you again in Jesus' mighty name? I want to talk with you today 
a very specific or something that we all know as children of God, but I want us to reconsider our ways. I want us to speak about our salvation. In the book of Isaiah, where we have read, we are hearing the Bible speaking and saying unto us, Mogorina, unto us, something has happened. Unto humanity, something has happened. In other words, there is something beautiful that God has brought to the realm of people. Why? Because God himself wanted a change in the life of men. Remember, God is the one who created heaven and earth. And after creating heaven and earth, he created man. And after creating man, man was living according to whatever way he was living. Why? Because he's going to bring salvation to his own people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is why I went on to name the message of today, salvation, or let me say rather your salvation. In the life that we are living in today, for us to be able to inherit what has been written in the word of God, or what God has placed for us, we have to go through Jesus Christ. We have to be born again. We have to be washed clean of our sins. We have to be away from the way of sin. So now, it means, if we are still living in this world, it doesn't matter whether you are coming to church each and every day, whether you are praying so much, whether you are fasting so much, whether you are going up on the mountains or down on the valleys, the issue is, which is so paramount or important, do you have Jesus in your heart? Because in these days that we are living in, children of God, the house of the Lord has been invaded by people who claim to know Christ. Whereas the Christ they are speaking about, it's not there in them. When you want to speak about your salvation, the important thing that you have to speak about is Jesus in you. Is then that you will be able to explain nicely the salvation that you are trying to speak about. We are so many Christians in the house of God, but Christians who don't have Christ in them. In other words, the things that we are doing does not make God to be happy because the one whom he sent for us, we are not acknowledging him. Hallelujah. For us to be real Christians, Christians, let me tell you, we need Christ to be in us so that we can be able to do that which will make God to be happy. The houses of the Lord today, they are dirty. They are you know why they are dirty? Because who na lirina? They are us who don't have Christ. And somebody who can read them say, maybe I'm being personal. Yes, I am. Because I'm telling the truth. We are full, we are men in the house of God. But we don't respect the Christ that has died for us. Even the Christ that we're speaking about is not even found in us. Why do I say so? Because what we do does not pertain to the commandments of what is written in the Holy Book. On Sunday, the day was telling us about commandments. Scientific language, they say there is a catalyst. Hmm? Catalyst is this thing. Oh, okay. Okay. 
English at home. We black people, eh? All of us, I believe we know. You put this thing called cook soda. In scientific language, they say it's bicarbonate of soda. Why or you put Huh? So that it can be good in a few minutes rather than taking much long. Now, in the life of Christianity, there is only one catalyst. One. And the catalyst is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible says he was given so that he can come and catalyze your life. The thing that was supposed to take five years will take five months. Something that was supposed to take ten years, it will take one year. Do you know why the catalyst is there in you? Now we don't matter, we don't wow, we don't become amazed. When we see those many, 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 many delays in our lives, let me tell you, Sipiri, Wanapapa, the issue is the catalyst is not working in us. There are other catalysts that are working in our lives. That is why there are so many delays in our lives. If you have the right catalyst, uh, everything must work out. That is why Paul said this word, it's no longer I get that live, but Christ that liveth in me. Catalyst. When you search for a job, you go to him. Papa, I'm searching for a job. I know the Christ in me will do it for me. And Christ in you will direct you to the right place. And when he directs you to the right place, you go get the job that you are searching for. I know I might behave speaking heavy language, but it's the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is what I'm trying to say. Banaba Papa. Banaba Mudimu Akawa Opila. One day I made a joke in the church. I said, I've been a Christian since. I can tell you, I'm not even ashamed to speak it. Since I was born, I was a Christian. But I was half Christian. And I have this side. So you can never come and lie to me. Because I know all these things. My father is a minister of the word. My mother was doing the same thing I was doing. Now, as I was growing, I was stubborn like you. I was doing things the way you are doing them. I was walking also the way you were walking. Until one day, when I was in a certain service, I heard somebody speaking the way I'm speaking. That nothing can happen to you unless you accept Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is why our lives are messed up. It's because upstairs we think we are doing it the right way. Uh -uh, you haven't even started. If you want to do it the right way, accept Jesus into your life and see what Jesus is going to do in your life and see the changes that Jesus is going to bring into your life and see everything that Jesus is going to do in your life. Can somebody say hallelujah? I just saw a CEO. When Jesus is not there, there are, there is a lot of problems. I'll tell you the number one problem that we have. A big one. People blame each other. I said, no, it's not me, it's this one. Things are not moving, it's because of my wife. Things are not moving, it's because of my husband. Things are not moving. It's because of my pastor. Mm -mm. It's not them. It is because Jesus is not there in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is Do you have Jesus in your life? For us to be able to prosper. In the book of Acts chapter 5, the Bible says, God has exalted this man. God has exalted Christ. When he exalts him, he wanted him to go and sit there on top so that he can be able to monitor you and me when we are down here. Because when he is there, he is seated as a savior of the whole world. A prince that is reigning supreme. 
So now for us to be able to have or to inherit that which God has spoken, we must be having the Christ in us. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah? In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 10, the Bible says, He is the savior of all men. Hey. Can you ask the person that is, who is your savior? Baba we their savior came Mamrut. Baba we their savior. Ke apostle. Ah. Baba we their savior is who? The Bible says Jesus is the savior of all men. So now the Bible, what the Bible is telling us there is saying to us. When you go to the house of the Lord, your paramount important thing must be Jesus, your savior. In other words, when we do our things in the house of God, Jesus, our savior. When we shout and when we scream and when we jump and when we do all these things that we are doing in the house of the Lord, when we give and whatsoever, we are doing it for who? Jesus, our savior. In other words, this Jesus, our Savior, we have to go to him wholeheartedly. Hmm? He is the one who did the finished work. The finished work of what? Of taking you and me from the sinful nature that we were living in. And making us to be able to come and sit down in his temple or in, her, in his house. And we listen to the word of God. I'm telling you today, it is an opportunity, a greatest one, to know Christ Jesus as your savior. If you can have that revelation, ah, you are going far. If you can find that revelation of Jesus Christ, my savior. There is nothing that can stop you. If you can find that revelation, there is nothing that can stand before you. If you can find that revelation, there is nothing that can stop you. Because the Bible says, Christ in us, the hope of glory. Huh? When Christ is in us, he is the hope for our glory. When Christ is in us, every door that is closed is open. Let me tell you a story, just narrate a little bit. The Bible says, Kamrawa, after he died, the apostles were seated in a house, closed doors, closed windows, closed everything. And my Bible says, when they were seated there, he just appeared in their midst, Kukurushu. So it means then, Christians, when you have Christ, you even enter places where you are not supposed to enter. You don't need keys. You have Jesus in you. You don't need qualifications. I was saying to my son one day, I said to him, you know, people are crying for this opportunity that you have and they're not finding it. I will tell it by me. I said to him, there is no school that I didn't school. There is no college that I didn't college. According to my own understanding. But look at me now. I'm holding my head and making noise. And life is going on. Where is that school I was schooling? Huh? Where is that college I was colleging? And then I said to him, my son, if you're crying to go college, you're wasting your time. Look at your mother. Mother wasted the time. A lot of years, I'm telling you. Spending, I'm not saying you must not go to school. Eh? I'm saying when Jesus is in you, when he gives you direction, you'll be able to follow it. And when you follow it, you don't even wonder and you worry. 
Why? Because he's in you. He does everything that you need. When Jesus appeared in the closed doors, huh? they locked everywhere. They closed everywhere. But he appeared and said, peace be with you. Hmm? So now when he appears in your closed doors, the first word that he will say to you is, peace be with you. Because in those closed doors that you are in, you don't need anything. Let me tell you, in that delay that you are in today, child of God, in that problem that you are in, child of God, in those troubles that you are in, child of God, today you don't need anything else. You need only Christ to be there where you are so that he can say these words unto you. Peace be with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is, do you have Christ in you? <laughs> you know, when you have Christ, you don't worry about tomorrow. The Bible says, allow tomorrow to worry for its own self. When you have Christ, you don't worry about what people will say about you. Because you know God is the one who says everything about you. Others, when they speak, they say, God has the final say. Yes, I agree with them. God has the final say. They can insult you. They can close the doors for you. They can wish you and re-wish you and wish you again and again. But at the end of it all, God will be the one to have this final say about your life. Hallelujah. Can you ask again the person that is, do you have Christ in you? Christ is the door to our salvation, brethren. There is a Shangan song that says, Look at me when I hit it done. When you see us shining the way we shine, it's because of Him. When you see us rejoicing the way we rejoice, it's because of Him. When you see us doing things the way we are doing them, it's because of Him. All things that are impossible, when you come to Him, they become possible. Everything that cannot be done when you come to Christ, they are able to be done. But the only thing that you have to do, children of God, to accept him as your savior, to accept him as your Lord, to accept him as the king that will reign in you, to accept him as the God that will rule in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask for the last time? Do you have Christ in you? Let's go to the book of Philippians chapter 2. Verse 12. I want to finish so quick. Philippians 2.12. Let me read it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you hearing what the Spirit is telling us? I don't believe it means the Spirit of God. Eerie, it says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, this is the important word I want us to listen to. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Tell the person again, work out your salvation Okay. Then this Bible or the word of God is telling us 
when we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, things does not end there. There is waking out that we have to do. Hmm? There is some waking out that we have to do. There are some things that we have to do to be able to maintain that salvation. Many of us here, one day we went to the front, lift up our hands, closed our eyes, and pray a 10 minute, 5 minute, whatever minutes prayer. And say, I accept you, dwell in my life, and what, 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 what in Jesus' name. Amen. And we went back where we were seated. And we went back home. But when we failed, when we came to, to this line, work out your salvation. This issue does not end up in receiving. It goes on in working out. In other words, you have to work out your relationship that brings about your permanent salvation. There are people that are saved temporarily. There are those that are saved permanently. I will explain to you why. Those that are saved temporarily, they are saved because. Eh? Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you not saved temporarily? <laughs> they are saved because, like my children, maybe they are saved because their father is a pastor, like me before. Huh? Because if God can just give me a job and the pastor is standing there saying, come to Jesus. If you come to Jesus, the job that you are searching for, you are going to get. If you come to Jesus, the disease that you are giving is going to be healed. If you come to Jesus, that which you are searching for, you are going to get and you stood up, you ran. Because Huh? Sister, if you want to get married, be saved. Accept Jesus as a Lord and Savior. When you are born again, you will find marriage because my brother, you've been searching for a job for a long time. You are not finding the job of your dreams. You have gone to school. You have done one, two, three. But things are not working out for you. Come to Jesus. Jesus is going to open a door for you. You are going to prosper. I receive. You are going to be a leader. I receive. Because. And there are those who are saved. Because they need him. You don't become saved because there's something that is attached to him. Even if I don't got a job, he is my savior. Even if I don't wear expensive clothes, he is my savior. Even if I'm not driving a car, he is still my savior. Even if this disease is not going away, let me tell you, he is still my savior. Even though I don't live in expensive houses, he is still my savior. Even though I'm not eating rice and meat every day, he is still my savior. Even though I'm not working and doing things the way that people are expecting me, let me tell you, child of God, he is still my savior. Allow Jesus to be your savior no matter what. Allow him to be your savior even though things are not working out for you. The houses of the Lord today, they are dirty and filthy. Because of Christians, of because. I will explain to you. If you are here because, it's very much easy for you to go back and sin because you are just waiting for a particular thing to happen. 
you are not able to work out your salvation. If you have been saved permanently, you go then and do what daddy was telling us on Sunday. Follow all the commandments. They are working for you, you follow. They are right, they are wrong, you follow. How about Wichisha when they ask you? You are always going to church. Every Wednesday is you. Every Sunday is you. You said, yes, I'm going there. I'm doing the commandment. I'm following. Every day we see you, you are praying, you are making, mm, I'm doing it. Do you know why? I'm doing the commandments. I'm following. You don't follow because you have been promised can you tell the person that is close to you? You don't follow because you have been promised. Our churches today, Baruti pastors, they are full of Christians that are there because they've been promised. They are not there because they want him permanently. I once said one day, I said, Christianity is not a religion, it's a lifestyle. You change the way you walk. You change the way you talk. You change the way you dress. You don't do things no maganjani. You do things according. There is conscience in you. When Jesus is staying in you, there are some other things you are even afraid to say them. Even though they are there in you, but you just say, let me not say it. Jesus will say it for me. It is not because you are stupid. I love to call stupid this way. My daughter loves me when I say this. It is not because you are stupid. Mm -mm. It is because you want to be a permanent Christian. Hey. You know, when you are a permanent Christian, children of God, we see you by the way you do things. You don't do things to be seen by men. Nobody will take you anywhere. But Jesus can take you somewhere. When you are a Christian, the Bible says, you have grace. Salvation brings grace. Ah. Let me tell you what is grace. Grace, grace is favor. That you were not supposed to get. But because you have Jesus, you get whatever you will get. Hmm? The favor that you were not supposed to get. But now because you have Christ in you. You have the grace. And when you have the grace, the things that you were not supposed to have, one up, up, you start to have them. Because of what? The grace. Many of us here who let you go, my Okay? I was loving with Daddy one day. I said, But God is good. If somebody cannot see, or you have been koma hayengwa kwa dintong di randa I was laughing with my children yesterday. We were speaking about majuru. Do you know majuru? Leatiba. Okay. So I was talking with them. I was saying, when we are still young, still of tender age, we will sleep in this randa verse that has been. At this was feminine. I just in the arm and I just Oh, shuri wa ungaru toko. But they will make it nice and beautiful, and we sleep there now because we're still not here. You will bed wet. Oh, it was not a joke, it was a And then when you wake up in the morning, so they were laughing to me and say, Mama, you also know these things, and I know them. That is why you see me being crazy like this. I was not born here, I was born there. I even know Majuru. Some of you, when you come to Haute, I said, You live only. I 
Ogara li tibi majuru, majuru roba rachi seba ngao. Rachi seba nanga chichuru. When you woke up in the morning, you take the pop of yesterday, you know the pop of yesterday? You put it inside the fire. And when you put it inside the fire, it burns a little bit so that it can be fresh. And when it becomes fresh, you took it and two, two, mapani, do you know mapani worms? Pastor. You put two of them on top there. And two stones of salt on top there. And you walk with them going to school. Now, do you think I'm crazy? When God has given me a grace like this, do you think I can play with that grace? When I know where I'm coming from, it is because of the grace of God that you see me standing before you. It is because of the grace of God that you see yourself being the way you are today. It is because of the grace. If it was not the grace of God, I don't know where you were supposed to be today. It is because of Christ that that is why, let me tell you, don't play about salvation. Don't play about Christ. When you play about Christ, it makes me to be angry. Why? Because I know where I'm coming from. Many a times when I have time, I sit down with my children. They don't know anger. So I try to update them. So you used to day with speaking about uh, my sunzi matuku. Hala o luma musimutu. O shisha o ko. And the move and that o shuri. Nya di bati. Sorry basa fiti ven. So now when you wake up in the morning, my daughter, Prophet Tano said to me, Mama. Because she doesn't know them. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So we try to explain. You know, there are these red ants. If it can just bite you once, you are okay. You will never do it again. In other words, it was the beating of, of your parents. If you can just find that one, one, Ian, you are number one. But look at what Christ has done for us. Huh? Look at what Jesus has done for us. God has given us the grace. And the Bible goes on and says, when you have Christ, you have the light. When you have the light, you will never allow darkness to come into your life. The Bible says he is the light. The light in you. I love this Christ. Why? When he comes into your life, he brings about consciousness. Light. This light will make your consciousness to be alive. And when your consciousness is alive, you will never go back and sin again. You will run away from darkness because you have the light. Can somebody say hallelujah? In the book of John 8, verse 11, we are hearing about Jesus speaking to a woman. I want us to go and speak about sin now. Oh God. In the book of John 8, 11, we hear Jesus speaking about a lady that was accused by the people. They wanted to stone him. And when that lady reached to him, he said to her, what is it that I'm accusing you? They're accusing you for. And she explained and explained and explained. And after that, she said to him, I'm not condemning you. Before he asked her, where are your accusers? Because he asks them a question. If anyone amongst you knows that he is not a sinner, he must cast the first stone to this woman. And their consciousness spoke with them. Another one said, yesterday, I was where, 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 seeing a witch doctor. Yesterday, I didn't sleep at home. I was with somebody's wife. Yesterday, uh, 
I was drinking, I was thirsty. I found myself in a beer parlor and I was drinking yesterday. I was doing this, this, this. And the Bible says they all dropped their stones and they went away. And Jesus said to the woman, Woman, where are your accusers? Hmm? And the Bible says when she turned, there was nobody there. And she said, because your accusers are gone, I don't condemn you. Go, but sin no more. Hallelujah. Can somebody say to the second people, second person close to him or her, go and sin no more. That's the secret. When you have Jesus in you, the light comes to you. When that light comes to you, it revives your consciousness. When that consciousness has been revived, darkness has run away from you. How will you know that you are not a real born again Christian? You will see always darkness walking and coming closer to you. You must go back to the drawing board and it says it means that light that the Bible speaks about is not there in me. That is why darkness is always following me. It means something is not right with me. But for the truth, when Jesus is there in you, the light from heaven comes to be in you. Sin automatically runs away from you. Why? Because of the light that is in you. But now, if you went to Christ because it becomes so easy for you to run back to that sin or the other why? Because you went there because. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is, didn't you come here because? Didn't you accept Jesus because? Some have accepted Jesus because their wives are born again. Some accepted Jesus because their husbands got born again. Some accepted Jesus because of this reason or the other. But today I want us to re-inspect ourselves. Are you born again because you want to follow him? Are you born again because you need him? Are you born again because you want him? Now let me speak to you, children of God. We are all born again, isn't it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Bazalwan. We are all born again, isn't it? Yes. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, Isaiah, chapter 1. We are reading this and we finish. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Can somebody say hallelujah? hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. We pray you've been blessed by today's message. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. And keep watching Cherish TV.